Hey, welcome to The Forge. However you got here, I want you to know you're not here by accident. As a matter of fact, you may be here by the thumbnail or you may be here today because you saw the title and your life hasn't gone like you planned. I never thought I would be sitting here in a basement some years ago when I was pastoring a church and I had a daughter that was born number 29 in the world with a horrible genetic disorder and I would watch her die every day for years until she finally passed away and I would preach her funeral. I never thought my life would go where it went, but quite honestly, life has a habit of doing that. And you may be here today on this video, you may be watching this and you may be going through financial collapse or you could be going through a, a spouse that's leaving you. You've been married for years and yet now you're not connecting anymore and you're on the verge of a divorce. You could be here today because you can't make ends meet and life hasn't gone as you planned. Your business or whatever it is may have collapsed. You may be here today because you had somebody that mistreated you or bullied you or sexually abused you when you were young and life has not gone like you thought it was going to go. However you got here, I hope you'll listen and stay with me for just a little while because I believe God has a message for you. Listen to what I'm about to say. There are no accidents. There are only divine appointments. And today, you are here by divine appointment at this time in history, at this time, to hear what God wanted you to hear. Young man, young woman, older man, older woman, whoever you may be, you are here by a divine appointment, whether you believe that or not. God has brought all of history for you, your history, to this one moment in time so that you could hear the message about God's love for you. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to The Forge. Let's go. If you have a Bible, great. Turn in it to Genesis chapter 3. If you don't, just listen along if you will. But we're going to be in a very, very familiar passage, a very familiar story. And we've gone back to the basics, back to the beginning of Genesis, and we are talking about Adam and Eve. Now, I know many of you who may be watching this, you are still trying to decide if this book is real, if God is real, and all of that. And like I've said before, that's okay. But I want you to learn a lesson from Adam and Eve this morning on when life goes bad. You see, quite honestly, Adam and Eve were put in the Garden of Eden by God in this perfect place. They never thought for as long as they were alive before this time, that they would end up where they ended up. Now, you may be out here today, and you may have ended up in a place where you say, Jeff, I don't even know how I got here. I don't even know what happened in my life. I, I'm not even sure. I was married. I was happy. And then it all blew apart. Or you may be saying, Jeff, my entire life has come to this point where I was sexually abused. I was molested. All of these horrible things somebody did to me. I never thought I would be here. There's hope for you today. There's hope for me. As a pastor for years and years, when my daughter died and I preached her funeral, I said, God, that's enough. I'm angry, I'm bitter, and I ran from God for 15 years. I never thought my life would be here. And yet, this morning, I want to tell you from my life experience that there is hope. And there is so much hope, you can't even understand it at the moment. You have been uh, given an opportunity by God. God has allowed you for some reason to click on this video so you can hear this message of hope. Now it starts with 
Adam and Eve, and we know that God created Adam, and then he created Eve, and then he put them in a garden, and he gave them dominion over the earth. As a matter of fact, let's go to Genesis chapter number three, and let's read. It says this, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Now, hang on a second. You see, I do not believe, many theologians don't believe, and I don't believe that this is the first conversation that Eve had with the serpent who was nothing more than Satan disguised. This was not the very first conversation. I believe that Satan was grooming Eve over a period of time because why was she not, uh, you know, just appalled? Adam, look at this. Here, here's, a, here's this serpent that's talking, right? I mean, we have nothing in Scripture that tells us that there was anything else in the animal kingdom that was talking other than this serpent. So why wasn't she just completely baffled and why wasn't she scared to death that there's this talking serpent to her? I believe it's because Satan talking through this serpent was grooming her over time. He had gotten her to a place of comfortability that she was willing to talk about the very things of God. Now watch this. It said, the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. Now, interestingly enough, we don't have anywhere in scripture where God said you can't touch it. As a matter of fact, we know that Adam and Eve were tending the garden, but we believe According to scripture, that what she did was she heard God's instructions from Adam and she added on to it. You see, that's what she did. She said, look, we're not allowed to eat it. We're not even allowed to touch it or we're going to die. And God didn't say that. So now she's already confused. And the serpent says this in verse four of chapter three, you will not certainly die. The serpent said to her, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You see, it's interesting to me, 1 Timothy chapter 2, that Eve was deceived. This serpent had been grooming her and getting her ready to eat of this because that was his ultimate goal. Many of you, even in your young lives, you were groomed by people, whether it was for nefarious reasons or whatever, you were groomed by people for their own purposes, for their sexual pleasures or their their sexual uh, deviancies, and you were molested and you were raped and all of those kind of things. And I've heard so many stories of people that had things done to them. You see, Eve was being groomed. She was an unwitting participant in this. And she was the one who was not at fault when he was telling her all this. She was having all of this stuff done to her. Now, she did ultimately disobey God's command and sin by eating the fruit. We know that. But here we find out in 2 Timothy that she was deceived. In other words, she had this nefarious plan forced upon her without her knowledge until she finally fell into the plan. You may be somebody where you had something forced on you by other people, by somebody else, and you didn't realize that what was going on was for their nefarious purposes. All you knew is at the time you felt terrible about it and you didn't like it, and it led to very bad things in your life. You see, God has you here today so that you can hear this message. Adam chose to sin. I want you to look at verse 6. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and she ate it. She also gave it to her husband who was with her. Now hang on a second. 
in all of this, in all of this conversation, where was Adam? He is the husband. He's the protector. He's the one who should have known, wait a minute, there's a talking snake here. A talking serpent grabbed it and killed it, right? But he doesn't. And this is why I believe that Satan had been talking to her, whispering lies to her, getting her ready, grooming her so that she would eat of the fruit of the garden and so that she would sin. And Adam was passive. Adam did not take action and instead allowed this to happen to his wife. You may be out there and your mom and dad did seemingly didn't protect you from a family member that raped you or from a family member that molested you or from a family member that took advantage of you. And you wonder and you're like, why were they passive? Why did they not do something about it? Listen to me. God has a purpose for you and he loves you and he's bringing you to this point where you can learn this lesson today that he loves you and he has hope for you. God still says he has a plan for your life, a plan of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Look at Satan when we're reading this, we can see that Satan's got a target, a bullseye on Eve's back. He's going around her spiritual authority, he's going around her husband and he is targeting her. He's after her. He's going to bring her down and he ultimately brings the entire human race down through this one act. But where was Adam? How come he was passive? How come he did not protect? And you may be there, like I said, and you may wonder, why was I not protected? Why didn't somebody help me? Why didn't somebody realize what was going on and step in? You see, like it or not, Satan had a nefarious plan for Adam and Eve, and he worked it. And Satan had a plan for you the moment you were born, and he was working that plan. You say, where was God? Why didn't God stop this? Or why did God let that happen? God did not do that to you. We either do it to ourselves or it is forced upon us because we are now, the Bible says, born in sin. And because we are sinners, because of that reason, people do terrible things and they do terrible things to us. And it can be forced upon you in your innocence and you wonder why nobody protected you. God was taking all of this stuff and he's working it around to where you would come to this point in your life to hear that he loves you. He knows your pain. He saw it and he is not for it, but he wants to heal you of that today. You see, Adam let it happen. But then Adam participated in this sin. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2 that Eve was deceived, but Adam wasn't. I do believe that Adam loved his wife so much he would rather join in sin and death than lose her because he knew that she had sinned and that God was going to judge sin and death would pass upon her. So he ate of the fruit as well. She was deceived. Adam went in willingly and be a part of this with his wife because of he loved her so much. Now look what he said. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good, she ate it. She also gave it to her husband who was standing right there. And he ate it. Then, they bo- then the eyes of both of them were open, the Bible says, and they realized they were naked for the very first time. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. So so what they did was they tried to cover it all up. They realized, hey, we're naked. We're, 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 We're exposed. What do we do? And they tried to cover themselves up in their shame. Eve had this thrust upon her. Adam knew exactly what was going on. He was a willing participant. And you may be out there. And you have made bad choices in your life. You were a willing participant in a lot of bad things. Maybe you took advantage of people. Maybe you uh, um, did things that you were ashamed for anybody else to know. And understand something. 
Even though you cannot control your consequences, you can control your choices from here out. I've said it so many times in all my videos, you cannot control your consequences or how long they last or how severe they are, but you can control your choices. God wants you from here out to make good choices. And that first choice starts with, with choosing Him. You may be out there today and you're watching this video and you had plans for your life. You thought your life was going to end up over here and it's ended up 180 degrees different than what you thought. Do you know that the Bible says that man devises his way, but God directs his steps. You see, you may think your life is going to do one thing, and because you have an enemy who hates you because you are made in the image of God, he wants to destroy you from the day you're born, and he does everything he can to destroy you. See, because you live in enemy territory. When Adam and Eve, when they sinned at this moment, do you understand that they lost the title deed to earth? God gave man and woman the title deed to earth. He said, go, subdue the earth, rule over it. And when they sinned, it was given to Satan. He usurped the authority of man. And now he is the one who controls all of what we see. When Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness, what did Satan say? He said, if you will fall down and worship me, I will give you all of the kingdoms of the world. Jesus didn't go, hey, listen, man, that's not yours. It's not yours to give. No, we know that Jesus didn't say that at all. All he said was he used the word of God to combat that. Right? So we know that everything on this planet, this earth is his territory. You live in enemy territory. And because of that, there are always casualties of war. But listen to me. God has brought you around to this moment in time. And I want you to hear something. When God came and he was looking for Adam and Eve, he knew exactly where they were, but he said, hey, where are you? And they said, we're over here. We were hiding because we were afraid that we were naked and we hid. And God said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? He wasn't questioning whether they did it or not. He knew they did, but he was getting them to admit. And if you're somebody that participated and was a willing participant in destroying your life, then God is bringing you to this moment where he is saying, hey, listen, tell me what you've done. Confess it. Let me know. I already know, but I love you so much. I want to hear. Tell me. Tell me about your life. Let me hear it. If you're somebody that had uh, all of this thrust upon you and you're an unwilling participant and somebody groomed you or, or somebody hurt you and, and somebody took advantage of you, God still says, hey, tell me where you are. Tell me all of your pain. Yes, you stand naked before God. He knows it all anyway. I find it interesting that in verse 10, in verse 10, Adam says, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you you were naked? Verse 11, have you eaten from the tree that I command you not to eat of? Of course, God knew. The man said, the woman you put here, she is the one who gave me the fruit and I ate it. So Adam was blaming Eve. You cannot blame anybody for your life where you are because at some point you have been a willing participant and God says, tell me all about it. I want to hear it, but don't blame other people. God wants you to come and God wants you to pour out your heart about what's been done to you, but also about what you've done as well. You see, all of us are sinners and all of us have done evil. All of us are born with this horrible thing called sin in our life. And until we are forgiven by God and confess it, God 
wants you to take responsibility for where you are now. You don't have to live in destruction anymore. You don't have to live in hurt anymore. You can forgive and move forward. You have been living in a prison of your own making and bitterness against somebody who quite honestly has probably moved forward and forgot all about that stuff, but you haven't. Bitterness, remember, is the pill we swallow a poison, hoping the other person will die. God wants you to confess your sin. You see, you're not asking forgiveness for them. You're not confessing their sin, what they did for you. But God wants you to not hold that anger any longer. And God does not want you to die in bitterness. The Bible says bitterness rots the bones. And you know this. And if you have been somebody like Adam, you're a willing participant in all of this stuff uh, that you have done and you have hurt others and, and, and all of us have. There is none righteous. No, not one, the Bible says. If you are a willing participant in, in sin, then God wants you to confess. God says, hey, where are you? What are you doing? You're standing naked before me this morning or this afternoon or tonight or whenever you're watching this video. And God wants you to confess. God doesn't want you like Adam did to blame others. God says, take responsibility for you. You see, that's all you can do. God has no grandchildren. He only has children. God comes to you and he wants you to confess your sin. He wants you to ask forgiveness for your sin. He wants you to accept his son as your uh, savior for your sin. Not for your brother, not for your sister, not for anybody else, but for you. Because one day you will stand before God, just like I will. And I will give an answer for what I did with Jesus' gift of salvation. Did I accept it or did I reject it? Do you know the only thing that will send you to a place called hell is to reject the uh, salvation that Jesus provided on the cross? That's it. That's the sin that will send you to hell. That's the unforgivable sin. Everything else you've done, everything that's happened to you, everything that you've participated in, all of that stuff is forgivable this morning. Tonight, whenever you're watching this, it's all forgivable. And God says, all you have to do is come to me and tell me what it is, confess it, Take responsibility for it. Ask me to forgive you. Jesus paid the price. He shed his perfect sinless blood on the cross. You see, the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness for sin. And either you will pay for your sin in eternity in hell and separated from God forever and ever, or you will accept Jesus' perfect sacrifice for you and receive salvation today. I love this story because here are two people that had a perfect life. Yours hasn't been perfect. They, everything was great, but they never thought that they would end up outside of a garden with a flaming sword guarding the way and wouldn't allow them back. They never thought that they would have two sons and one would murder the other. They never thought their family would be in such disarray. And this morning, you may be here watching this video and your family is in disarray, your marriage is in disarray, your business, your your past is destroying you. It's an anchor around your neck. And God says, I want you today to give it all to me because you stand naked before me. Give it all to me. I already know about all of it. I know about all of your hurt. I know about all of your pain. And I am here to tell you that Jesus died on a cross so that he could take all of your hurt, all of your pain, everything away. Jesus said, come to me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then he said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, you may have walked through life with all of this burden and all of this pain and heartache. You may be going through all of these horrible things in your life, even now, But God said that he will walk with you through it. And there's the difference. You see, you can say no to Jesus today and you can keep struggling in life and you can keep bearing the burden of all of this weight 
of your of your life and just walk in hatefulness and bitterness and anger or you can give all of this to God and know your life will not still be perfect but God said he will pick up that burden for you you see God has a plan for your life and when you come to him God said that he will work all things together for your good they're not all good Matter of fact, a lot of it's bad. You may have a lot of bad things that happened to you. You may have done a lot of bad things to people. But God says, come to me. Doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what's been done to you. Come to me and I will carry your burden for you. Come to me. He said, I will take all of the bad. I will work it for your good. And I will turn beauty for ashes I will take the car wreck of your life and I will do all of the work and I will make it into something beautiful. You see, God wants you to glorify him and God wants to use you. God wants to take your life and all of that pain and all of that hurt and God wants to use your story because your story matters to God. God has seen you write your own story this entire time. And God says, give it to me and let me write it fresh for you. And then let me spread it out to other people who have gone through what you've gone through. And let me make something beautiful of your life and something useful so that you can lead other people to him. You say, Jeff, did you ever expect your life would end up the way it is? No, never did. I thought I would be pastoring a church still. I thought I would, a lot of things. But this morning, I have seen God rewrite my story. In 2019, when I got right with God, I retired from bodybuilding, quit all of that stuff. I've lost all of this weight and and quit all of those drugs because I want God to rewrite my story. I want God to make beauty for ashes. You see, I was that pastor who became bitter at God and fell. I was somebody who uh, was shamed in front of a community. You say, Jeff, you shouldn't admit that. I admit that to you because I want you to know that God has not forgotten you. God still wants to use you. God loves you. And God allows U-turns. Would you, if you already know him and you are wandering far away from him, would you make that U-turn today and repent and say, God, I've wandered far enough. I come back to you and repent of your sins and start to follow him again. Or if you have not come to Christ, and you've never been saved and born again, and you are just angry and bitter, and you don't understand all of this stuff, you just, you're just, you're, you feel destroyed in your life. God says, come to me. Jesus died for you. He loved you so much. He died for you, for God so loved you. Put your name there that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever you would believe in him, you would have everlasting, eternal life. God wants you to have an abundant life and God wants to turn all of that bad and he wants to turn it all for your good and he wants to make it useful and give you a purpose in life. Will you let him? Would you please like and subscribe to this channel? And even more than that, I believe you know somebody that needs to hear this message today. Would you please share it? Would you comment below and tell me if this has meant something to you? Would you let me know if you have prayed to receive Christ as your Savior? Or you say, Jeff, I'm getting back on track with God. Would you let me know? It would be such an encouragement to me to know that my life is meaning something again to you. You matter to God and you matter to me. And I will answer your comments. Thank you so much for being here. Again, please like, subscribe, but please share this message with somebody. Somebody who's hurting, somebody who needs hope. Thank you again.